this video I'll be upgrading the straight knife cutter head of my old Kitty 636 joint up finder combination with a new segmented Shelex cutter head from Bird Tools. While I start to take apart the machine, let me tell you why I wanted to have this cutter head upgrade. It provides a better cut quality, produces smaller wood shavings that are easier to suck up and has many little carbide inserts. With these you have to set them once and then never again. They last a lot longer and to change them you only need to rotate them to the next edge. And since it's carbide they won't get nicked as easily. When you had to get off the old pulley we kept slipping with the gear puller. But with a hose clamp keeping the ends together, it worked. The other parts I already had taken apart when I bought the machine, so that was easier. With all the tables and everything, there's actually not much machine left. And unfortunately, to get X to the cutter head and get it out, we have to also remove these bearings housings, which also guide the feed rollers. Yeah, basically we have to take apart the whole machine. Also, this is the right way to iron your clothes, right? Right? There are the springs that tension the feed rollers. Now one thing that's pretty cool is that everything is pretty simple to take apart and also straightforward. Yeah, keep in mind what I just said. Then it was time to get off the bearings. Trying to spread at their housings with two quick clamps didn't work. Also not with bigger ones. Then we kind of pushed them out by screwing against the old cutter head. This took quite a bit, but worked. Do you remember what I said? Now one thing that's pretty cool is that everything is pretty simple to take apart and also straightforward. Yeah, not really. Getting the bearings out of the housings was a lot simpler and since I wouldn't reuse them it didn't matter if they'd get damaged during that. At first I thought I can install this cutter head with the inserts just cut up with tape. But now seeing all the trouble we went through removing the other one, I think it's the same trouble to get this in again. So yeah, it's better to just remove all of the inserts, which might take a while. What I also wanted to do while upgrading the cutter head is upgrading the belt drive from the current flat belt drive to a poly V belt like this one. It's almost as flat and flexible as a flat belt but instead has lots of little V's and so you can transfer more power without tensioning the belt as hard and you don't lose as much power through friction like with a regular V belt. This of course also means having matching pulleys and the problem with this machine is that this pulley is rather special because it has a second one attached to it, which is for the feed mechanism. And that means we have to custom manufacture it, which is the next step. And that began with cutting a 50mm diameter piece of aluminum. Best tool we had was a hacksaw. My dad did all the turning for this project and first turning one phase through.
then drilling and boring the exact size hole for the press fit on the cutter head. We had some new drill bits to try out and as you can see they cut through that aluminum like it's nothing. To work on the outside we first had to make a little jig. Then turning away material for the smaller pulley. Since the small pony runs a flat belt, we try to get a crown onto it with sandpaper and files. And that actually did work. You may can't see it, but we could measure it. And finally turning the V profile. Fortunately we had a turning tool with the required 40 degree angle. And what can I say, it worked wonderfully. And there we go, old one, new one. Came out pretty good. The motor pulley of course also now needs this profile and therefore you need to get it off. There are threads half cut into the motor shaft, half cut into the pulley and there's a screw in it. And if I can get this out, then I should be able to just pull the pulley off. Well, that was simple. To turn this, we made a jig that fits on the other jig. Since this pulley is some steel and a lot bigger, turning was a lot tougher and slower. Unfortunately the high speed steel tool didn't survive this material. The only solution to continue working was to grind a copper tool to the 40 degree angle with a dremel tool and a diamond disc. This actually worked very well. It may doesn't look that pointy, but it's sharp and that shot was zoomed extremely close. Unfortunately, I couldn't film turning the profile since we had chattering issues and I had to assist turning. Well, it was a pain to make, but it worked and came out great. Installing it back on the motor should be rather simple now. While I had this good access to the mobile base, I also decided to install new wheels, bigger wheels, because the old ones worked and were also made for that weight, but moving that weight around with these was just always a pain. It just needed bigger wheels. Mm, and now I have to wait for delivery of new parts. Hey, here they are. The bearing has to be flush with this surface in this flange and to get it in there we used the jig that we used to turn the other pulley. Turned a little bit away here so that it only presses on the outer ring and with a screw and a washer from this side and the nut we can now press it in. Of course aligning everything before. I just discovered that this bearing should not be flush with the surface because this thing that covers it up 
presses or would press the bearing in with this part here by exactly 0.8 millimeters and so we just modified this thing and now can press it in by exactly this amount. The other side is exactly the same except that here the bearing has to be 2.2 millimeters below this surface because on this ring this part sticks out further. Next the bearing needs to be pressed onto this part of the shaft together with this cover and we want to do that with this tubing which will only press on the inner ring and a big clamp. I don't know how much I can film of this or how much you will be able to see but we'll see. Now the new cutter head is installed. I hope I didn't forget anything. But now all that's left to do is assemble the machine back together. Next is mounting the pulley and maybe you already wondered how the power is transferred because there's no shaft key or anything. So how this works here, this little part of the shaft is knurled and measures exactly 14.15 millimeters. And we machined the hole in the pulley to exactly 14.1 millimeters, so too small. We'll then heat up the pulley in the oven to 200 degrees Celsius, which will make it expand by about 5 one hundredth of a millimeter. And we'll cool down the shaft to negative 40 with some cold spray, which will make it shrink by about 1 one hundredth of a millimeter. Then, in theory, we can just slip on the pulley, and when everything gets to normal temperatures again, the pulley wants to shrink again, the shaft wants to expand again, and because the hole is still too small, it will then clamp extremely hard on the shaft and that's how it works. That's called a press fit. And here's also stuff to press it on if it doesn't slip on right away. Well, that did not quite work as intended, but the pulley is on and that's all that counts for now and while that's cooling down i can prepare the rest to install the machine on the mobile base again now we have to set the table to the new cutter heads therefore we installed a couple knives on both sides and by loosening and tightening these three screws on either side of the table we can bump it up or lower it down a little bit to make it parallel and to the right height to the cutter head So the way I have the outfit table now set is when I hold a steel ruler here and slowly turn the cutter head, the knife has to catch it and drag it something between 2 and 4 millimeters. I did this for both sides and that's in my experience the best setting. With the infeed table installed again, I need to make it coplanar to the outfeed table. Again, by loosening the screws and bumping on the casting and the table. And while I have the scale here set to zero, I make sure that it's exactly at the same height as the outfeed table. And the best and easiest way to achieve that is with a good long straight edge, minus my table saw fins, some feeler gauges, and maybe a dial indicator. Okay, so we got this table parallel to this one within 500 of a millimeter. The same is for this end, I get this filler gauge just barely underneath here and the same here.
And the way we did this, so setting this parallel to each other, we loosened all three screws here and then raised and lowered it and compared it to this table with the dial indicator. Then tightened all screws once it was good and did the same on this side. And after both sides were set, checking both sides again and making adjustments again until it was good enough. And for adjusting this end, we loosened these two screws on both sides again, so that these kind of act as a hinge. And could then tilt the table until it was correct and tightened all four screws again. Then rechecking in the front again and that's it. And installing the belt is pretty simple now because I already had the right motor position from the flat belt before and the poly V belt just clicks into position and then I can tighten it. So, time to fire it up. Jointing works really well, but of course I did some more off-camera testing and discovered a pretty big problem with the planer. There the surface is anything but good. It leaves a lot of rattling marks. You can't see them right now, but if I change the light, here we can see them and as you can see that's pretty bad. Same on this piece. And it can't be the cutter head because jointing works perfectly, so it has to be the machine. So then I tried planing this piece and then lowering the table by just a hair so that the feed rollers would feed it through but no planing would happen and then i got some marks of the infeed rollers and you can see them here and not surprisingly they have the exact same distance as the other marks from planing so the problem is the infeed roller also as you can see at the point where the infeed roller disengages and just the outfeed roller pulls the wood through there the surface is just Perfect, so the problem has to be the infeed roller. So what I need is an infeed roller that won't create a periodical change of load to the table, which is basically the same infeed roller, but with not straight teeth, but instead twisted. On more modern machines, that's how they do that, and that eliminates that problem. Since I can't do such a complicated shape, I'll just make an infeed roller with a knurl and that should serve the same purpose. So let's make that. A friend did a knurl for us and we now are going to finish turn the ends. The only problem is to get the dimensions of the ends. We have to take apart the whole machine again. But I won't show this again. So we are back at this state and we had to remove all knives again of course. Nothing left in here. And now we have to get off this piece without damaging the bearing so that the infeed roller comes out. So here's the old infeed roller and I measured everything and made a drawing out of that. Now I give this to my dad and he again turns the new infeed roller to these dimensions. I skipped filming even more turning and went on with drilling the hole for the sprocket pin. To get the bearing in again without damage, we used a cover plate and three screws. This took about five minutes. All right, new infeed roller is installed. And of course, I won't show the reassembly once again. We are back here and before I assemble the rest, the tables and everything, I test the thickness planer now 
This will make a huge mess, but I want to know if it works. Safety people, please don't watch for one moment. Well, this solved the problem and this board is now just so smooth. Exactly what you expect from this color head. There is a little bit of snipe at the ends, but it's very minimal and I can somewhat adjust it with this machine. But it doesn't matter right now. I'm just so happy that this worked and I can go on putting everything together and make some projects with it. Next is adjusting the thickness table and therefore I've prepared two pieces of wood that I'm going to plane on the left and right side and compare the thicknesses and then adjust the tilt of the table to make it parallel with the cutter head. Well, this is kind of fortunate and unfortunate. Because believe it or not, but without any adjusting, the table is parallel to the cutter head within four one hundredth of a millimeter, and that's for woodworking basically perfect. As you can see, forty-five exactly, forty-four point nine nine. I also planed a wider board and got the same result here. The way you would adjust the thickness table is you plane your two pieces and remember their thickness difference or write that somewhere down. Then you have to disassemble the machine from the motor and put it on its side because the four spindles are connected with the chain. Then you have to loosen the chain with this sprocket and then unconnect the chain from the sprocket on the side that needs adjustment. Turn that, do the same to the back sprocket because you want to adjust front and back and the amount that you adjust depends on how much thickness difference you have. The spindles have a pitch of two and a half millimeters per turn and the sprockets have 10 teeth so skipping one tooth on the sprocket means an adjustment of 0.25 millimeters. And you adjust both sides and then tension the chain again, set the machine back up with the motor and run another test cut, compare the thicknesses and hopefully everything is good. Maybe it's not and you have to do this all over again. This is quite a pain in the ass, but unfortunately the only way. I had to do that once when I adjusted it and I guess you can understand why I'm quite happy now that I don't have to do that. But yeah, that's how you would do it. Okay, the machine is fully set up again and working, ready to use. I installed all belt covers again of course, inside and outside and also gave the guard a little bit of love off camera and this is working properly again. So this machine is back in business now and working better than before. Now there are probably a few more things that you want to know and should know about this cutter head if you also think about upgrading. First of all I got this from Holbrand.com because they were the only ones that had this machine listed on their website. So I just ordered it and I didn't think that they had this on stock so I expected some shipping time. I ordered this back in February 2018 and it was delivered 4 months later. So that's the first thing you have to keep in mind if you also want one. Together with toll fees and shipping and everything, this cost about 750 euros, which is almost double the amount that I paid for this old used machine. But luckily for me, this was kind of sponsored by my viewers who support me on Patreon because I could pay for this with the Patreon money. So everything you found me there goes back into upgrades for the shop or new tools. Thanks for that. And if you also want or more people want to support me there, 
I have it linked in the video description, I have it linked under every video, but I never mention it because I don't really want to beg for anything. So would I recommend this cutter head? Honestly, if you have a kitty machine like I do, no. And the reasons I just showed you the past 20 somewhat minutes, it's just a ridiculous amount of work. I mean, everything is possible, but the infeed roller problem you can only solve if you have a lathe or know somebody with a lathe and can make another infeed roller for you. And for machines that are difficult to get access to the cutter head or disassemble and reassemble, there also I wouldn't upgrade. For these situations I would just go and buy a machine that already has such a cutter head installed. But for any other machine, where it's much, much simpler to upgrade, sure, why not? I don't forget to review this cutter head and make test cuts and comparing it to the old one. But since this video is already quite long, I decided to make this into a whole separate video. And you can watch that by clicking the link in the video description or at the end of this video. And if you even want to know more about this machine, how I got it and how I built the car for it and everything, there's also a video linked somewhere, so that's it. I'm not going to edit this video, which might take a while. <sighs> this upgrade took so long. But it's over now. Oh, one last thing, something bad. I have screws left over. Eight wood screws, though. I have absolutely no idea where they are supposed to go. Hmm. In this video... In this video I'll be upgrading the straight knife cutter head of my old jointer planer combination with a new Shilix Kilike Hilikol cutter head. Hmm. And now I have to wait for the delivery of the new parts. Well, I just noticed that this bearing should not be flush with this surface because this... Uh, what is this called? And the poly V-belt... <clears throat> and the poly V-belt just clicks into position nothing left in here and now we have to get off this uh, this piece again without damaging the bearing sharpen and setting the knives again and never having to live with nicked knives that were freshly sharpened again uh, 